Judges, if you would take the time to give a brief introduction of who you are uh, to the team, and then when you're done, we'll let them start with their presentation. Uh, my name is Bob Parker. I spent 20 years selling communication satellites in Asia for a Hughes Aircraft Company, and now I'm working on stuff I can never talk to anybody about, including my wife. <laughs> I have a PhD in physics from USC, and as I said, I spent many years selling satellites, so I have quite a lot of business experience as well. I'm Bill Costano. I'm a senior manager with uh, Federal Express, and uh, I manage uh, a team of uh, managers responsible for aircraft maintenance here in uh, Los Angeles. I'm Doug Sanders. I'm principal ethics advisor of the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena. I have a PhD in uh, political science, and my background is in contracts and procurement. I'm Kevin Harrick, I'm a research manager in the personal care uh, sector, Kimberly Clark Corporation in Abington, Wisconsin. Thank you, judges. If you'd go ahead and press that now and begin your presentation, thank you. By the age of two, children in America are able to recognize the golden arches of McDonald's. Ten years ago, 91% of children at the age of six could recognize the image of Jill Campbell. There's no denying that brand image is an important tool in the American society, and McDonald's needs to be aware of the influence that public sentiment can have on our image. Hello, my name is Mary Rose Raffold, and these are my associates, Karen Rommel and Carrie Rowe. We're here today as internal consultants to speak to you, the senior management of McDonald, on how you can cater to a healthy lifestyle while being socially responsible and profitable. First, we're going to take you through some background information on obesity, and we're going to go through our proposed, our proposed ideas of Diversifying the menu, restructuring our meal plans, changing our marketing strategies, and contributing to community efforts against the obesity problem. After we take you through some background information, we're going to guide you through the legal, ethical, and financial discussions. And then with these in mind, we're going to make recommended initiatives that you should, that we believe you should implement in your company strategy. By the end of today, we hope to convince you of the imperative nature of these implementations. It is unclear right now how exactly the obesity ethic will, will contribute to the changes in the fast food company, in our fast food company. But Dr. Marion Nessel, expert in nutrition and food studies, believes that the obesity ethic will drive a consumer reaction against unhealthy foods. As obesity rates increase in the United States, it's becoming, health awareness is becoming a justifiable, a justifiable concern for our company. If you take a look now, this graph, this app shows, in 1985, the darker blue area represents the percent of the population in those states that is at least 30 pounds overweight. The dark blue represents a 10 to 14 percent area. As we move to 1993, the darker blue, we see that the lighter blue is spread to the entire nation, whereas the darker blue, which represents 15 to 19 percent, is our new focus area. In 2001, the red indicates that over a third of our country is in the 20 to 25 percent range. <coughs> As the obesity rates increase and America is getting heavier, so have the number of fast food restaurants in America. Looking at this chart, the blue indicates the number of fast food restaurants, whereas the red indicates the number of sit-down restaurants. Starting in 1972, it, there's been a steady increase in the number of fast food restaurants in America. And then you see in 1997, we actually overtake the number as far as fast food versus sit-down restaurants. We can't deny that this correlation exists, but we, what we can do is analyze the trend and see how it's going to affect our corporation in the future. I'm going to turn it now over to Carrie. We'll discuss the legal implications of this trend. Thank you, Mary Rose. We have just seen the correlation between fast food and the proliferation of between obesity and the proliferation of fast food restaurants. As a result, many people, including consumers, are, are blaming the fast food industry. As one of the leaders in the industry, McDonald's is receiving a lot of this blame. In 2002, the plaintiffs, Hellman, 
filed suit in New York court against McDonald's for deceptive marketing practices and negligence. Both counts one and two relate to deceptive marketing practices, and they were dismissed, mainly because the plaintiffs failed to specify their claims. Although, although they were dismissed, count one is very significant. It addresses the issue of whether or not we have to put nutritional labels on our food and at the point of purchase. In his discussion of this issue, Judge Sweeney made it very clear that we do have to put nutritional labels on our food. We argued that under the Nutritional Labeling and Education Act, we were exempt. This contradicted the New York General Business Law, which said that we did have to put labels on our food. And Judge Sweeney indicated that the state law in this case overrides the federal law. Counts three, four, and five deal with negligence. Negligence deals with our breach of a duty of care to our consumers. All of these counts were dismissed as well because we were able to, su to successfully argue that consumers are aware of the dangers associated with fast food, such as high levels of cholesterol, fat, sugar, and salt intake that can result in medical problems. And because they are aware of these dangers, they assume the risk in eating our food and we cannot be held liable. These counts were dismissed, but like the first two counts, there is still a significance that we need to take into account. Our main defense was that consumers are aware and they assume this risk. So, if consumers are not aware of the dangers associated with our food, then we can be held liable. The plaintiffs attempted to amend count three to say that our products are outside what a reasonable consumer would expect to be in a hamburger. But this was not considered in Helen Rose McDonald's. However, Judge Sweeney did discuss this issue to see if a future lawsuit would hold up. Here, the plaintiffs allege that McDonald's food has been so altered that it is now beyond what the reasonable average consumer would expect to be in a chicken McNugget. In addition to chicken, all of these other ingredients are cooked into our chicken McNugget. And Judge Sweeney indicated very clearly that this is beyond what a reasonable consumer would expect. And this is the type of future lawsuit we will see. <coughs> Considering these future lawsuits, we are going to be in the legal spotlight. And it is important to consider the consequences of such scrutiny. The industry as a whole is being blamed for obesity. But as one of the leaders, McDonald's is facing the most blame. Every time our name appears in the newspaper, on television, or in an article, we are being blamed as a culprit of obesity. And this is very detrimental to our current and long-term brand image. And that ties directly into our profitability. As we are in the spotlight, people are also posing the question, is fast food the new tobacco? This is also harmful to our brand image. First, tobacco, is, tobacco has a negative association because it's associated with lung cancer, which is one of the leading causes of death in America. We do not want to be associated with an industry that is known for killing people. Second, tobacco faced $40 billion of legal fees and a $206 billion settlement. This is not an area where we want to be headed either. Finally, we are being forced to make very damaging concessions about the nature of our food. This is what happens in lawsuits. Plaintiffs make claims and they have to defend them. As a result, a lot of research is being done. And for the facts that they find, are, when they find harmful facts that are true, we have to admit they're true. And the public becomes aware of this. And this is also very harmful to our brand image. Considering future lawsuits, legal fees, the cost of a settlement, and the effect this is having on our publicity, we want to reduce our legal vulnerability as much as possible. And our initiatives will help us do this. First, we want to adjust our marketing strategy. Counts one and two were dismissed because the claims were not specific. The slogans that they did refer to were, make chicken every day, and McDonald's can be incorporated into a healthy and balanced lifestyle. Now, the judge dismissed these as mere puffery, but we are still treading a very fine line between puffery and deceptive marketing. And to avoid any future claims that could interpret our marketing slogans against us, if in fact our food is not as nutritious as we say it is, we should avoid making statements like these altogether. Second, we need to provide more nutritional information. Judge Sweeney made it clear that the state law that requires us to provide nutritional information at the point of purchase overrides federal exemption. 
Not only will this help avoid future lawsuits based on nutrition, but this will also protect us against negligence claims. If we provide consumers with the ingredients and all the nutritional contents in their food at the point of purchase, they are aware of what they're eating, and therefore they assume the risk and we cannot be held liable. Finally, we need to take a more supportive role in the community. This is a proactive approach that we can take by sponsoring local sports teams and endorsing other forms of physical activity. This, go, this ties into our duty of care and really shows that we go above and beyond our duty of care to consumers because not only are we providing them with a more balanced and nutritious diet, but we are also making sure that their lifestyle is healthy by making sure they are exercising. All of our legal issues stem from an idea of a duty of care that we have to our consumers. This ties into a broader context, mainly our social responsibility. With every action we take, it is important to ask, is this ethical? Now, I'm going to turn it over to Karen, who will guide you through this discussion. Thank you, Carrie. In thinking ethically, we need to be aware of how our product affects our consumers. Beyond profitability and beyond commitment to our shareholders as McDonald's is a public company, we need to address our commitment to our stakeholders, namely our consumers and the community that we serve. As Mary Rose mentioned before, there is a correlation between the proliferation of the fast food industry and the rising obesity levels within the United States. If fast food finds that it's in any way responsible for this increase, it is our obligation, our social responsibility, to help ameliorate the situation within the community. Fast food, specifically McDonald's, has been accused of packing a higher energy density within meal portions, referring to a greater number of calories within an average meal. This would result in unintentional overeating and therefore cause greater obesity. This is a problem because we as individuals who make up the corporation must be concerned with the individuals of society. We have to relate to them on a human level. Obesity increases the risk for several diseases and in this way, we need to look out for the future of our consumers. Obesity is related to heart disease, diabetes, arthritis, hypertension, as well as gallstones and many other diseases. The risk is increases as obesity levels increase also. Therefore, we need to be mindful of ways that we can improve the quality of our food so that we don't put our consumers at risk for detrimental effects in the future. It is the consumers who indirectly put food on our tables. Therefore, we need to be mindful of the food we provide to them. There are specific demographics who, are, who merit extra attention in this obesity epidemic. The first of which is referred to as plump poverty. This means those individuals who live in low-income neighborhoods because currently we're experiencing the phenomenon of plump poverty where there's a disproportionate increase in the number of individuals in low-income areas who are finding themselves overweight as opposed to individuals outside of these areas. Because of the links between obesity and related diseases, this is a growing concern. Fast food has established itself in low-income areas as a convenient and affordable option, which is key for the people who are, are just looking for means of putting food on the table. Half a century ago, this notion of poverty would not have existed because those people who lived in low-income areas were typically seen as the skinniest members of society, looking for where their next meal would come from. So we have McDonald's we provide affordable options for our consumers. However, we have to make sure we're providing healthy options as well. 
it, it is found that there is less awareness about nutritional factors and health choices within these neighborhoods, and it is our duty to make these up, to make educational programs available so that we can serve our consumers better. We market McDonald's as a lifestyle, especially during within these neighborhoods, and it is it does correspond with the fast-paced American lifestyle. It is convenient and affordable for people to come to McDonald's. However, we need to make sure that we're also stressing nutritional value. There is a lack of education regarding how to integrate McDonald's into a diet effectively. And therefore, we need to fix this problem before it relates to any additional health risks. The correlation between lack of education and obesity levels as you can see, this graph is broken down into those who attended college, completed some portions of college, those who completed high school, and those who have less than a high school education. The lowest line refers to those who attended college, and as you can see, it's lowest, and those people who have gained more education are at less of a risk for obesity in later in life. The middle lines, those who completed some college and those who completed high school, are slightly higher than those of who only than those who completed college. However, what we really want to focus on is this top line, those who have less than a high school education. Because it's our duty to make sure that our consumers are receiving the benefits of, in, of eating meals as opposed to being detrimentally affected in the future by health risks. Another demographic that is affected by the lack of education is children. Parents are concerned with the future of America and how we as an industry market to their kids. It has been found that nearly 50% of parents today are opposed to direct marketing to their children during television commercials, television programs. Also, we have several partnerships, especially with current Disney movies, and we provide toys within our Happy Meals to make the experience of coming to McDonald's enjoyable for children. However, in our campaigns, we do not stress the nutritional benefit of, implement, of eating McDonald's. And we also have to provide healthier options for children. Parents feel that their kids are being exploited because while the kids are craving McDonald's, because we, we kind of what we draw them in, the parents have to make these decisions on behalf of their children. And with the rising obesity epidemic that's going on right now, we need to concern ourselves with the future of America also. We need to focus on healthy options so that our children will not experience the later health risks associated with obesity. Currently, we have initiatives in test areas, such as replacing our french fries with apple slices and replacing the soda, typically found in Happy Meals, with juices or milk. However, we need to provide a wider range of choices, not just to appease parents and gain their trust back, but to make sure that we're actually looking out for the best interests of the nation's children. We're supposed to be providing happy meals, not tummy aches. The health risk associated with obesity is a very important cost for us and that we must address. I will now turn the discussion over to Mary Rose, who will address some of the other financial costs of this growing epidemic. Thank you, Karen. There are some serious financial risks that we are potentially facing in the future. Last year, $75 billion was spent on obesity-related medical costs. $39 billion, near over half of the cost was covered by taxpayers through government programs such as Medicare and Medicaid. As the, low, the correlation between low-income areas and obesity rates continues to increase, 
this number will be further intensified as it is these low income demographics that really rely on the government funded programs such as, such as Medicare and Medicaid. And as there is increasing pressure put on the government to alleviate problems, they're going to look to, to shift the blame and look for other financial op options of covering these costs. Now, Carrie related to us the financial, the, the legal risk that we face with potential lawsuits. And as with the tobacco industry, the $206 billion based in the lawsuit went to cover the costs associated with lung cancer, which was proven to be a causal relationship that, to smoking cigarettes. As there's no legal implications relating to fast food in that respect, there are no pending trials where there's a causal relationship between obesity and causes relating to fast food. We're not in much financial risk as far as a lawsuit. But another option the government is looking towards is placing a tax on fast food. Currently, the World Health Organization is urging nations to place what they call a fat tax on unhealthy foods such as hot dogs or sodas. In order to alleviate the cost of childhood obesity, Canada is currently preparing to put an 8% sales tax on all restaurant meals under $4. This directly targets the fast food industry and looks to them as a cause of the obesity epidemic. Now, there's been talk in the United States about similar taxes, but we haven't reached any legislation, legislative decisions regarding this issue. However, as we shift more towards it, we have to think of the implications. As part of our report on social responsibility, we state that we are committed to doing, to doing the right thing for the communities in which we operate and for the consumers who we serve. If such a tax were to be implemented in the United States, it would not only affect us financially, but it would place burden on our consumers, especially in the low income areas. The tax would effectively raise prices for consumers, which would shift the demand cur curve down. And as this shift occurs, so would some of the costs of the tax on the, on the fast food industry, especially onto McDonald's as an industry leader. As this demand curve shifts down, it would also decrease our total output as well as decrease our total revenues, which is primarily financially what concerns us. In order to avoid major financial risks in the future, we're going to have to take a proactive approach against obesity and against our association with obesity, which involves changing our, changing our image in order to avoid any association in the future. Primarily, we've, we've relied on the traditional burger and joint, burger and fry joint image that we portray. And we've looked to this focus group to provide our revenue and to really bring in our service. If we look at Porter's generic strategies, that places us in the narrow market segment, low cost focus strategy. We're gonna recommend that, you move, that we move more towards a strategy of cost leadership, where we'll open up our market to a broader <coughs> by allowing those who are more nutritionally conscious to find a home at McDonald's and to join our consumer group. Right now, the with initiatives we have, such as the salads, a crispy chicken Caesar salad with dressing and croutons contains 530 calories, whereas a Big Mac, which is traditionally seen as one of our most unhealthy options, only has 493. If consumers are not, if health conscious consumers are not able to come to McDonald's and get a meal with the appropriate level of caloric intake that they are looking for, they'll simply go elsewhere. So far, our initiatives in this respect have been noteworthy. We're emphasizing a healthier lifestyle, and we're emphasizing exercise. We've also integrated some new options, such as the premium salads, the pita, our pitas, our McVeggies, and apple slices in target areas. We've even teamed up with Oprah Winfrey's personal trainer to show that consumers really need to focus on the exercise and their, their role in, as personal consumers responsible for their own nutrition. However, now I'm going to take you through specifically what we can do 
in order to increase the likelihood of avoiding financial risk in the future. First, we need to emphasize education in children and in the low income areas. We suggest doing this by, by sponsoring local community nonprofit tutoring programs in which we would offer classes for parents and children, especially in low income areas, to learn about nutrition and to learn about how to implement the, the nutrition into a healthy lifestyle. We want to do this additionally by providing information about our product and letting the consumer know how they can implement a healthy lifestyle while coming to McDonald's. By focusing on education, we'll, we want to show, we'll not only show consumers that we want to work with them, but most children today have never known a world without McDonald's. And it's important to stress that nutrition is important to us. Additionally, we need to create an environment where this is possible. We need to not only show the education group, we need to make it possible for the nutrition to be found with us. And we, we suggest doing that by diversifying our menu. Specifically, we want to restructure our value meal plan. Right now, an a, a extra value meal containing a, sa a sandwich, french fries, and soda contains upwards of 1,500 calories, which is more than half of the recommended caloric intake which is of 2,000 to 2,500 uh, 2, suggested by nutritional we, we hope to We hope that you'll take our suggestion and implement some sort of family meal option, which would both allow people in low-income areas to have the affordability and the convenience, but also the suggested nutritional awareness if they're not able to re receive the education. By a family meal plan, we, we advise some sort of, instead of ordering four separate meals where each would contain a sandwich, french fries, and soda, we would make family style portions with french fries, integrating in carrot slices and apple dippers, as we've done in test groups, as well with, this, with the sandwiches, integrating in salads, so that we can stress to consumers that they, their experience at McDonald's needs to be one of moderation and balance. And doing this, we'll be able to market ourselves as such. We'll be able to take the focus away from passing the blame to consumer responsibility to taking the initiative and talking about our food, talking about how we provide some of the responsibility behind this. It's not just you. Exercise, yes. But also, come eat our food because it's healthier and we're trying to make it so for you. In all of this, we need to contribute to the community efforts against obesity. If we look, if we look at the costs versus the payoffs, we'll see how we can do this. As of right now, the future is yet to be determined, and the decisions that we make right now in this room will affect how we're seen in the future. If we if we act now, we can change our brand image, and open up our consumer base to, new, to a new variety of healthy, conscious consumers. If we don't act, we'll be at the mercy of the lawsuits and taxes that will be imposed upon us. And we're taking into mind the implicit costs of the loss of, rep of reputation that is involved in all of this. So it is imperative that we implement these initiatives as part of our dedication to the community in giving back. That is why it is with a vested interest for our stakeholders, namely our shareholders, our consumers, and our community, that we take the initiatives recommended today. We want to thank you for inviting us here to advise you. And right now, we want to open up to any questions or concerns that you may have.